Hi, this is Bob. Been a ham operator 54 years. This is a uh, continuation of the restoration of a Heathkit SB110A. Now the uh, information that uh, I'm giving you on this restoration is also applicable to uh, other rigs like the HW101, the SB102, the SB101, all types of radios, Harvey Wells, uh, Clegg, uh, Collins, all sorts. Now uh, this unit here has been washed. I showed you how to wash it there in segment two. Was that segment three? Segment three, excuse me. And it's been washed. It's been baked in the oven for two hours at 150 degrees. I left it in the oven overnight and it's looking real good. So it's ready to start inspecting and, uh, and lubricating and cleaning the uh, parts. Now, you don't want to oil these before you do the washing and the baking because you're going to wash and bake the oil right back out again. So what you want to do is uh, get a very small container. Got a little container here and I've got some oil in it and I just dip my jeweler screwdriver down in there and I can put a little tiny bit of oil right on that wiper. This is the spring wiper that grounds that capacitor. You do the same thing on the front and the back. Then you will find that there are bearings in there you can oil the bearings. Now I also use for oiling the bearings, I use a hypodermic syringe and just squirt a little oil in there. I went down to the drugstore this morning and asked the man for a hypodermic syringe, told him what I was doing, and he said, oh, he said, well, he says, you know, when those things get old, he says, we can't sell them. He says, I got a couple of old ones here, and he handed me one. He said, just, just go ahead and take it. That'll be fine. I said, well, thank you. So you might check with your druggist and ask him if he's got any old syringes that he can't sell. They make great oilers for oiling this stuff. You can also buy an oiler at Radio Shack too. Make a nice little oiler that they sell there. Now on the controls, you want to put a little drop of oil right on the shaft, right there. Just a tiny drop of oil right there on all the controls. Here's another one over here. Tiny drop of oil right there. And then when you do that, then you want to also stick your syringe down inside the control and put a drop of oil inside down in there. And that oil will over a period of time spread around on the contacts, the wiper contacts, and it'll make good connection in there and that will stop that uh, crackling, popping, intermittent control operation that you sometimes get. Now the tube sockets. In the tube sockets, sometimes these little contacts spread out you can take a very tiny jeweler screwdriver like this, put it in there, and pry those back together again. I'm not going to do it on this one because this one works fine. I don't want to, but you stick it in like that and you turn the screwdriver and make that a little tighter, and that socket will work again just fine. That's a good way to do it. Now, on the switches themselves, you can take your uh, contact cleaner have some contact cleaner in here. This is uh, some deoxid that I sprayed in there. Uh, deoxid is a real good one to use for this. And then I just take that on the jeweler screwdriver again and put a tiny bit on those little contacts right in there. It doesn't take much. You can see it spread out when you put it on there. And you do that on the contacts of the switches. Don't forget on the SB110 you've got... Whoop, don't want to turn that over. Not with that uh, cleaner setting on there. You've got contacts underneath in here in this box here and you want to inspect for everything too. On this one here these screws here were missing and I had to put all those in new. I also found a couple of solder bridges. I found a couple pieces of wire uh, that came off the solder braid uh, off the braid on the little coax that were stuck in different places that looked like they might short out and I found a solder splash that I took out of there too. So you want to look for things like that and uh, take those things out of there and inspect those. And here's a switch down here. You got to get in there with that uh, cleaner, put it on these little contacts in here and don't forget the ones inside here. You've got a switch inside here you got to do too. This connection right here was not soldered on this rig. I just soldered it a few minutes ago. Also, while you're in there, you want to burnish the relay contacts.
Didn't have my burnishing tool out, but I got it real quick here. And you do that by sliding this little burnishing tool in there in between the contacts and working it up and down. And then you want to push the relay so it's closed and then clean the other side of the contacts. Do both sides that way. And you got a relay down here too. And if you can't find that stuff, you can use a piece of stiff cardboard like a piece of cardboard from a file, uh, manila file folder and cut that, put a little alcohol on it and you can clean them with that. So uh, that's it guys. I talked to you about cleaning the LMO the other day, about uh, oiling the parts in the LMO and I showed you how to do that. And uh, when you oil those, those uh, gears and you oil the shafts in there and the wipers on the variable capacitor, uh, what happens is that oil mixes with the old hard grease in there and that keeps the LMO from jumping frequency on you, which is a common problem with those. So you want to do that while you've got it out. So I guess that's it. So we're going to start with the reassembly then when in segment five. So that's it, fellas. Uh, take care and uh, good DX.